best friends, but they always disagree. Taylor and Alan, I see in that. Uh, a while ago, we had talked about what happened to Rick Moranis. Actually, I think I talked oh, yeah. about it with Jesse, and then you got mad. But uh, hey, Matt, I just told you what happened. No, you were pretty upset about it. Respect his privacy, then. <laughs> uh, so we decided we w- we would talk about not necessarily because of that, but we decided we would talk about "Honey, I Shrunk the Kids." Classic Rick Moranis, and it is. So I've watched it with my kids the other day, and it is a movie that is it awful. It's it's interesting. It's not awful. Does it hold up? Did you like it as a kid? I think so. I loved it as a kid. And watching it now, I, I was yeah. more impressed with what they did. Yeah, because uh, this is what, like 90? Maybe earlier than that? Something like 88? that. 88? Yeah. yeah, I don't know when it came out. But I was I was impressed with how much they were able to do, how much story they were able to tell, and like... The visuals are are pretty weak, but most of them right. are practical, which helps oh, yeah. so much. Like, if you do practical effects in a movie, then they're not going to look dated in ten years. Right. Like that's why that's why a lot of the stuff in Jurassic Park one, the original, still oh, holds fantastic. up because it looks so good. Because it was an animatronic, it, because it was something physical and not dictated by how fast a computer is. Every time I see this movie, which I even just watched it uh, about a week ago, I'm like, how is this movie 25 years old and still look like it was made recently? Yeah. Like, it's just amazing that they were able to do that like i wish that i was older when this movie came out and i'd seen it for the first time because i want to know like how how did adults see were they just like completely blown away by these dinosaurs or well you remember when you went and saw jurassic world right yes is the exact opposite feeling okay so they were super impressive (laughs) yeah um but yeah, I remember this was this is the first mo- well, I, I don't even know. We're not talking about dress. Never mind. <laughs> Keep going. So, honey, I shrunk the kids. Uh it's very much a 90s movie, right? It's very Oh, for sure. All the kids and their dialogue and just everything about it is just screaming the 90s at you and mm-hmm. the the neighbor uh if you ever go back and watch it, imagine someone is doing an impression of Jim Carrey and it will it, frustrate you to no end he is so annoying and he feels just like he's trying to be jim carrey i can picture that which at this point what had jim carrey even done uh i think he'd been in like saturday night live um ace ventura might have come out it's right around the same time but i i don't know so let's see honey i shrunk the kids came out in 1989 oh wow and then Ace Ventura was mid-90s, 94 and 95. But Jim Carrey had to have done something before that, right? I mean, he was in Living Color. Um, I don't know, was he in Saturday Night Live? He might not have been. Oh, yeah. You know what? I don't think he was. He was in uh, Living... Was it Living, Living Color? Up until 1989, he had not really done anything notable. Huh. Maybe Jim Carrey stole the neighbor's. He yeah he based his character off the, the kid from Honey I Shrunk the Kids. <laughs> that was the father. Oh, the father, yeah, yeah, yeah. Russ, right? The Russ was one of the kids. Well, I thought that was Russ Jr. The uh, dad was maybe. also Russ, yeah. if I remember correctly. Potentially. Um, but yeah, no, he's super annoying. Um, but yeah, so the whole the whole movie is about Rick Moranis' character is a scientist who is trying to create a shrinking machine. Does it, but doesn't realize he does it. Neighbor hits a yeah. baseball through the window. The baseball is the key ingredient to make the, the machine piece. Yeah, to yeah. make the machine work. 
accidentally ends up shrinking all the kids. Kids get thrown out in the trash and then have to hike through the backyard, which ends up being the forced. Yeah. It, the jungle. They say it's about three and a half miles to go the 62 feet or something like that. Um, oh, okay. And, uh, I always thought that there was a lot more than just that. Like I thought there was, I mean, maybe it's because there's two other movies. Um, right. Cause there's honey. I shrunk the kids again and honey. I blew up the baby. I think is what it is. Well, there's honey. I blew up the kid and there's honey. We shrunk ourselves. Oh, is that what it was? Yeah. Um, but, but so it's, it's hard cause I, I don't, I always got confused as to where Honey, I Blew Up the Kid fell into this universe. Yeah. I think it's Baby, isn't it? I'm pretty sure it's a Blew Up the Kid. I thought it was Honey, I Blew Up the Baby. Because isn't it Blew a... Blew Up the Kid. Is it? Okay. But it came... This one came out in 1992. So it's almost like it's Rick Moranis' second family. Is it not the same family? I thought it was just the baby that got blown up. He... Okay, what do you mean? <laughs> now I'm confused. I thought it was still the same family. It is, but the other kids do, don't seem to exist in that movie. It's just the one kid that he blows up. Well, maybe the other kids have PTSD and have to get sent off to a mental asylum. And then he just starts over. Yeah. He's like, let's get a first start. I I just remember being really confused, but I, I loved all these movies. Yeah, so this one, the majority of the movie is just about them crossing the lawn. Right, um, and all the adventures. That I had, like, dreams of, like, coming across that massive cookie that they find. <laughs> the the oatmeal, the Little Debbie's oatmeal cookie. Yeah, I was like, oh, with the cream and everything. I'm yeah. like, that would be so cool. <laughs> and then, like, getting to sleep in a Lego our, our cool childhoods guy. were so different. Yeah, I know. I based my childhood wanting to live in this, and you based yours wanting to live in Terminator 2. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, sorry. <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, the, so it is, it's impressive what they did. It's impressive how much story they put into it. It does not hold up as a good movie, but it's yeah. an impressive like time capsule almost, you know, like the This is life in the nineties. Yeah. Um no, I mean not the shrinking technology or anything like that, but it's uh Well, speak for yourself. <laughs> they uh Yeah, I don't know. It's uh I don't really know what to say about it. It's fine. It's a good, it's a kid's movie, you know, like it's not supposed oh, to sure. be groundbreaking or anything like that, but it, it's good. Um, my kids liked it for the most part. They were scared of the, the bees and the, oh, the ants. The bees and the ant was horrifying to me. And the scorpion. There's a, oh. a scorpion. So they befriend an ant and, right. uh, they, so they use cookies to guide the ant and they ride on them because it's faster than they can walk. And then a scorpion shows up and tries to kill the kids, but then the ant comes and protects the kids, but then the scorpion stabs its stinger into the ant's head and kills the ant. And yeah. it's like, oh, that was kind of aggressive for that a little kid's movie. traumatic. But yeah. considering little kids might go around with a magnifying glass and burn ants on fire, maybe it's not that bad. Um, right. I don't know. It's just. Also, though, think about in real life. This, I, I don't know if you've seen a scorpion in real life, but you can kind of picture how big they are, right? Yeah. The, the Compared to an ant. Well, that was something that happened a lot in this movie was the, 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 the sizes. The perspective would change constantly. They weren't ever a consistent size to anything. Can you imagine scorpions? Size of ants just swarming you, uh, or ants the size of scorpions? <laughs> that would all be terrible. But like, there's the one scene where the kid is swimming inside of a Cheerio, 
And oh, his, in the Cheerios, yeah. His dad is about to eat them. Uh, I can see a Cheerio. Like I'm, I, I have uh, vision problems if I don't wear glasses. I have a hard time seeing things crisp. Uh, I can you see a, a good Cheerio. I could see a good Cheerio on a good even day. Uh, Would you say you could spot a Cheerio from across the room? Probably, but I could okay. if if I'm sitting there eating a bowl of Cheerios. I could definitely see that there was a person inside one of the Cheerios. Cause he has to get a magnifying glass out and be like, Oh, oh look, it's yeah. actually him. You know what I mean? Like, no, you would, you'd be like, Oh no, that's, that's, that's a person in my Cheerio. Like it would look like an ant. Like, you know how you can just see ants? Yes. Like that's what the people would look like. Like it, you don't, you, yeah, you exactly. might overlook them. You might think, Oh, that's an ant. But you don't need magnifying glasses to see them. Yeah. Um, in reality, the scorpion should have showed up and just like stomped on them. <laughs> just been massive, yeah. But either way, none of that matters. No. It's a great movie. It's pretty good. Have you seen Honey, uh, We Chunk Ourselves? I think so. I don't remember it. I liked that one for the same reason that I liked the first one because there's so many things that would be fun to do if you were that small. You just you like, you also had the same theory with Indian in the cupboard. You wanted to be Oh, that would have been so cool. <laughs> I could have lived such a better life than that stupid kid. <laughs> uh, he wasted that opportunity. He wasted it. It's well, like having a magic wand and not using it. What kids movie would you want to live in? What kids movie universe would you want to live in? If you could choose any kids movie universe. Oh man. Oh, that's tough. I'm gonna pro Indian in the cupboard might be one of the top ones. Yeah. Just because of the possibilities. But but I'm, I don't know. I'm that's hard because blank check. Well, see so I was gonna say that's hard because as a kid, my priorities are different. Now, yeah, I'd uh, blank check for sure, but as a kid, I don't care about that. I want my toys to come alive. Oh man, even when I was a kid I wanted to be the blank check kid. He had a castle. He had the VR back in the day, the old school VR. Yeah. You remember that? Like they used to have it yeah. at uh um Magic Mountain at Six Flags where you could go and it was like 20 bucks to play for like 5 minutes this VR game that on, <clears throat> the, Were you on the bikes things or whatever? No, you, it was standing. It was you had a gun, you're standing on this platform and you could walk around and but like you were stationary. Um, I don't remember that. Yeah, I did it once, and uh, it was so cool at the time, and it is so basic oh, yeah. now. Like it's the, oh, I'm sure the 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 difference is insane. Yeah, I I don't know. I'm a simple kid. I I might still take Indian in the cupboard. Yeah, just for the possibilities. Um. Oh man, fantastic stuff. But yeah, so Honey I Shrunk the Kids. The majority of the movie is about the dad trying to find the kids in the grass. And he like builds all these contraptions and figures out ways to look in the, tr uh, the grass to not step on them. And, uh, yeah, and, and, and make sure that no one else does or, you know, mows the lawn on top of them. Yeah. How it horrifying. <laughs> well, like if you think about the, uh, the actual, like, if that was your reality, right? Like, if you thought my kids are super tiny and they're lost in the grass. Yeah. You, that, how stressful would that be? Oh, super stressful. Stressful enough to retire from movies after you finish. <laughs> you think that's what did it? Not his wife He's being like, sick? You know what? I gotta, I gotta spend more time with my kids. They could shrink at any time. <laughs> oh, man. Well, what, yeah, that would be super stressful. What would you do differently for Honey, I Shrunk the Kids? Um, I don't know that I'd do anything differently because it's it it, it just kind of is what it is. It's nothing that I have like any problems with. Yeah, I think I would have done more in the house. I think I mean I, it's hard to say because I don't remember the second one, but I feel like. Because the majority of the movie was just through the grass, and that just looked like a forest. I right. think if they would have done more stuff in the house, you know, in different rooms and toys and 
You know, well, see, that's the thing. That's kind of how the the other one is. The honey shunk ourselves is pretty much all set in the house. And there's one part where there's like they get in a car, you know, like a Hot Wheels car, and they go down like a Hot Wheels track. And I was, I was like, that's so cool. I want to be in that car. The at one point the kid calls the aunt. I'm fairly certain he calls an Antony, uh, <laughs> which was uh, what they called the ant in Ant Man. And I thought there was. Oh a, really? Yeah, I thought it was a. Uh, not a callback, but like a uh, homage to how I shrunk the kids. But I, I could be wrong, because uh, it's me, huh? Because well, yeah, I don't. Uh, I could see it. In, in in my head, I'm trying to play Six Degrees of Rick Moranis to Paul Rudd. <laughs> That's it's not working. Yeah, that would be a tough one. But uh, yeah, yeah, how so, I shrunk the kids. It's uh, it's a kids movie. I, it is a kids movie. <laughs> I think it's worth showing your kids. I, I don't know. It's not, it's not the worst kids movie, and it holds up decently well. Uh, yeah. I, Harper had a really hard time understanding that they were shrunk, because I kept telling her, "I was like, oh look, they're so little," and she said, like, "No, they're big." <laughs> See, like, I can see them like a person, so no. But uh, no, it's a fun kids movie. That is good news. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm I, glad it holds up. I think we've said everything there is to say about Honey and Shrunk the Kids. Uh, but if you, yeah, that's gonna, that's gonna be it. If you enjoy our podcast, you can go to Patreon and help support us. You can help decide who has to pay the punishment. You can follow us on Twitter at Icing That Pod. Like us on Facebook. And, uh, we just want to say thank you to Boss Play for sponsoring our show. Yes, yes, yes.